got a gal in the Sourwood Mountains, hold yum de yum day. So many pretty girls, I can't count them, hold yum de yum day. Now I got a gal that lives in the holler, hold yum de yum day. She won't come and I won't call her, hold yum de yum day. Tall and slim, she sure is a dandy, hold yum de yum day. Them lips are sweet as sugar candy, hold yum de yum day. You keep improving on that guitar, Josh, and I just might hire you to do a little singing for the trappers on the rendezvous. Oh, no, you don't. I busted a guitar last year, had a chair broke over my head, and spent three weeks with them Indians to keep them getting killed. Well, that's what you got for jumping up and yelling you could whip any man in Kentucky. <laughs> I didn't say I'd whip any man in Kentucky. I said any woman, and somebody didn't hear me right. Well, cheers. Well, women, aren't you going to wait and see if you got any mail? Where I'm from, I don't know anybody that can write. Well, now, that's strange, because here's one for you, Josh. Now, who do you suppose would be writing me? Well, you could always open it up and find out. I'm surprised I didn't think of that. Yeah. What do you know about that? What do you know about what? Uh, how do you expect us to know anything when we haven't had a chance to read it yet? Then look at that. Mr. Josh Clements, dear sir. As executor for the estate of the late Langston Clements, it's my pleasure to inform you that you have been named as the sole beneficiary in his will. I would appreciate if you would call at my office at your earliest convenience in order that the transfer of certain properties to your name may be accomplished. Sincerely yours, Marcus Whitmore. Is this the rich uncle you've been talking about? Yeah, but I don't understand that. Why he mentioned me in his will, I don't know. Nicest thing he ever said to me was ne'er do well or... Just how rich did you say your Uncle Langston was? I don't know. For sure. But the last time I visited him, I'll tell you this, he owned a goodly portion of Virginia. Well, now, uh, seeing as how you come in all this money, uh, don't you think maybe you could pay me that $50 you owe me? Cincinnati, $50 is about all I got in the world right now. I got to go to Salem, check out that will. I got to live somewhere while I'm there. Now, would you want a wealthy man like me sleeping in a livery stable? Putting on airs. He ain't even been rich five minutes yet. You know, Daniel, by the time he gets back from Salem, he won't even be speaking to us common folk. Now, you know me better than that. I'm not the kind of fellow that forgets my friends. Yeah, well, I ain't the kind of a man that forgets $50. Uh, that's for sure. You know what? When I get back, I might buy Kentucky and give you half of it just to show my appreciation, Cincinnati. <laughs> Suppose you know, Mr. Clemens, that in the legal profession, the retainer is customarily provided in advance. <laughs> I don't know. As a matter of fact, I don't even know what you're talking about. My fee, Mr. Clemens. In this case, a trifling matter of, shall we say, fifty dollars. Oh, what? Fine. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take it out of whatever I got coming there. Now look here, Mr. Clemens. I have spent a great deal of time settling this estate. I intend to be paid for it, or your case will be thrown into probate. I will take the $50 now. Well, uh, that pay in advance, that's kind of like buying a pig in a poke, ain't it? You've heard my conditions, Mr. Clements. Well... There it is. I, I don't mind telling you, it comes close to cleaning me out. Uh, excellent. And now... We can get on with our business. Anytime you're ready. The last will and testament of Langston Clemens. 
I, Langston Clemens, being of sound mind, do hereby will and bequeath to my nephew, Joshua Clemens, clear title to one section of land which I recently acquired with this bequest in mind. Said property is located on the Kentucky River near the present settlement of Boonesboro. Oh. Hey, that's right close to where I live. Uh, <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, my nephew has spent his life in a most carefree fashion and in avoiding honest toil. As a consequence, he has none of the skills which might make him a man of honest substance. To remedy this lack of knowledge, I also bequeath to him the ownership of my most trusted slave, one Jonah Wills, who will instruct and counsel in all matters pertaining to the land, the construction of the manor house, and the conduct of same, toward the end that my nephew shall belatedly achieve and maintain a position of importance and respect in the community. Well, if my uncle plans on me starting farming, it seems to me that he ain't quite as sound to mind as it said he was up the top there. Y go ahead. That's all. That's all? Now, look, I'm supposed to be the sole heir, and I happen to know that he had a big plantation over near Richmond. Well, your uncle was a very philanthropic man. He disposed of the bulk of his estate before his death and distributed the money among several charities. He apparently believed that you were capable of fending for yourself. Well, I appreciate all the confidence my uncle had in me, but right now I'd settle for just a little cash. Perhaps you'd like to read it. No, well, I'll take your word for it. I'll make you an even deal. You give me my $50 back and you can have that property. No, 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 no. I couldn't do anything like that, Mr. Clements. Now, here is the deed and location of your land, and here is a letter proving ownership of one Jonah Wills, a slave. What do I want with a slave? And in my opinion, your uncle has detailed that most explicitly. He might have detailed it, but that don't mean I got to carry it out. But I fail to see how you can avoid it. Oh, it's very simple. This uh, Jonah, uh, what's his name? He, he don't know who I am, and he don't know what I own him. And I sure ain't going to be the one to tell him. He has already read the will. You mean he reads? I think you'll find him a most intelligent and educated man. I ain't gonna find him nothing. That's all I got, right there. Now that ought to take care of the postage, the ink, and the stamps. And you write this Mr. Jonah, whatever his name is, and tell him that I set him free. Now that ought to settle everything. Well, there's no need for me to write. He's here in town awaiting your arrival. Would you mind telling me where? At the Blue Boar Tavern. He's been working there at night for his board and lodging. Is anybody in there alive? Nice, quiet little place you run here. Yeah, I know. You had us in a real slow night. Sometimes there's a lot of action going on. Oh, I'll bet you do. Yeah. What are they fighting about? Old bouncers just throwing out a couple of deadbeats and couldn't pay their bills. You don't mean to tell me one man's going to throw them three out? Three? <laughs> there were five to begin with. He's already thrown two out. Yeah, they, they passed me as I was starting in. Ah, yes. Uh, well, um, what's your pleasure, stranger? Huh? Uh, what uh, can I do for you? Oh, I'm looking for a man named Jonah Wills. Somebody said he worked around here. Oh, he's working now. Would you mind telling me where? No, right behind you. You mean that's him? That's him. The, the way I understand it is, the man that used to own him uh, liked to match him in bare knuckle fighting. Once brought him all the way to England to, to fight for prize. Um, what, um, what is it you want to see him about? Well, I just wanted to talk to him for a little bit. Oh, you, you want me to call him on over? No, no, well, no. There's no don't, trouble. I... Don't believe him interrupting a man when he's working. Just pour me a mug of rum and I'll wait till he's through. I've hired a lot of bouncers in my day, but I want to tell you that this black here is the roughest, toughest, best man to keep law and order in a place that I've ever seen, and he works cheap, too. 
Well, now, uh, if he's that valuable, you might be interested in buying him, huh? Buying him? That's what I said. Well, should I buy him? I already have him. But that don't mean you own him. <laughs> now, listen. You know, the man that owned him upped and died. You've heard of the phrase that possession is nine-tenths of the law, huh? Yeah, but that's where you figured wrong. You see, it so happens I own him. Now, look, and mister. I wait. I don't have any particular use for him. Now, I figure I can offer you a real good price on it. Mm. Say, uh, $50. $50, huh? Uh, tell me something. How come, if you own them, you didn't recognize each other? Because I haven't owned him that long, and I never had the chance to meet him before. Oh, 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 oh. You, you expect me to believe that, huh? I don't really care whether you believe it or not. I figured I'd just offer you a bargain. Oh, no, no, no. You figured and cheat me out of $50. That's what you figured. Now, you pay up for this drink and get out of here. Can I, I can't stop. Stand liars. And I don't like being called one either. Now, I got a paper right here. I'm no. not interested in papers. Now, come on, I want to get paid by this room. If that's all you're worried about, it so happens that. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I left my money over on the lawyer's desk, and I can go over there. Yes. Jonah? Yes, sir. Now, now, listen, sir. I, Do you I, want me for something, Mr. Williams? Yes, Jonah. We got another deadbeat here. Throw him out. Now, you wait a minute because I'm... Throw I'm... him out. Listen, I got no oh, paper. Oh, 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 oh. If you just let me... Well, at least you might give a fella a chance to do a little explaining. All right. All right, now, I've done it. Now, I'm mad. Jonah, he's back. Now, here. wait a minute. I'm going to speak my piece this time, because if I don't... If you don't, what's going to happen? If I don't, you're going to throw me out again, and I'm going to come back in, and you're going to throw me out again, and I'm going to... And that's going to get tiresome after a while. Now, I got a piece of paper that's signed Let and... Let me it. see that paper. It looks like the real thing, Mr. Clemens. You believe it's a real thing. Oh, you're Mr. Josh. I recognize the resemblance now. Well, it'd have been a whole lot better for me if you'd have noticed that a little earlier. I've been waiting for you for a whole month. Well, it took a month to get this letter, and right now I wish I'd never gotten it. I'll get my belongings. But wait a minute. That might not be necessary. Uh, now, if you give me that mug of rum. What mug of rum? The one I got thrown out for. I didn't get the chance to finish it. Oh, listen here, Sonny. You ain't paid for it yet. Well, the way I got it figured, if I went to all the trouble to get thrown out because I didn't have the money to pay for it, I got a right to drink it. Hmm. Well, I figure that you still owe me for the mug of rum, huh? All right. Well, you're just going to have to throw me out of here again. And don't look to Jonah, because he don't work here no more. <laughs> this time, it's going to be my pleasure. Now, wait. Oh. Listen, uh, I told you that Jonah was up for sale. Now. I'm a fair man, and I'm willing to take the price of the drink off the purchase price. Oh, that's, that's very big of you. Fifty dollars, did you say? That's what I said. It's a deal. It's a pleasure doing business with you. I hate to spoil your pleasure, Mr. Josh, but did you read that paper saying I belong to you? Of course I read it. Then read it again. Mr. Langston figured you'd try to resell me on the market, so he put a clause in there saying that you can't resell me. Looks like a good spot right there. Now, you get some wood for a fire, and uh, I'll go out and see if I can get us a little game. I don't think I ought to do that, Mr. Josh. <laughs> How many times I got to tell you, don't call me mister, just call me Josh. I can't do that either. Why not? Because it's, it's just not done. If I were to call you by your first name, it wouldn't show the proper amount of respect. I didn't ask you to respect me, just asked you to build a fire. And like I said, I don't think I ought to. I'm waiting. Waiting for what? I'm waiting for you to tell me why you can't build a fire. It's one of those things you'll simply have to understand. Here, I am your body servant. As your body servant, I have certain duties to perform. Building fires is not one of them. 
Well, as of now, it's a duty you just took over. You certainly have a lot to learn. You build the fire, and I'll get the meat. After supper, I'll start teaching you. Teaching me what? How to act when you own a slave. Excuse me. I'm beginning to wonder if I own him or it's the other way around. Now, the first thing you'll have to learn that there are different kinds of slaves. There's the field hands and the household help and the coachmen and the groomers and the stable boys. Then there's the um, body servants and the supervisors. Now, as a slave owner, you can't make one slave do another kind's of work. Well, uh, which one of these classes did you fall into? Most of my work was a supervisor. I made sure the slaves did their work. <laughs> I bet you're real good at that, too. But since you don't have anything to supervise, I'm willing to be your body servant until you get a better start. Well, just what does a, a body servant do? Oh, uh, he uh, takes care of his master's welfare and his personal things, uh, sees to it that his clothes are hung up and that his boots are shine. Oh, you're going to be worked to death. Seeing as how this is all the clothes I got, and I ain't never had a pair of shiny boots. Well, then I'll save up my strength until you get richer. <laughs> you might have pretty good weight. I've got a lot of patience. Well, my patience is wearing a little bit thin. So why don't you just go your way and I'll go mine? I'll just cut you loose and go. No, I can't let you do that. That's plain ridiculous. You're used to living in a big fancy house, servants looking out after you. And all I got is that little old cabin down on the creek, and I don't even stay there very much. I'll admit it doesn't sound like the things I'm used to. Oh, there's one other thing you've got to know. A uh, good slave is loyal, uh, sort of cold uh, amongst a slave. And then there's Mr. Langston. Before he died, I promised him that I'd take care of you. So you see, I just can't leave you. Oh, uh, do you mind if I ask one more question? Who's going to support the two of us? That's your responsibility. I give you my loyalty. You see that I'm fed and housed. Boy, you, you got a real good deal going for you. You know what? You know, I hate to bring this up, but somebody's got to do these dishes. And I don't suppose that that comes under the duty of a body servant, does it? No, that's for the household help. But to show you how loyal I am, I'm going to break all the rules. And we can each do our own. That's very decent of you. big man. Good to see you. Have you been doing any fishing since I've been away? Nope. And wait until you got back. Not much fun going fishing all alone. I wouldn't think so. Who's he? Oh, Dad, that, that's Jonah. You mean the one that got swallowed by the whale? <laughs> no. I, I do believe that was a different branch of the family. Hey, Daniel! Hi, Jonah. I'm Israel Boone. It's my pleasure, Master Boone. I know it's Master. I'm just plain Israel. You a friend of Josh's? Not exactly. You see, I belong to him. Belong to him? That's right. You mean he's, you're his slave? That's right. Is that why you're walking behind him? That's where a slave is supposed to walk. <laughs> That's sort of a silly rule. Did Josh tell you to do that? Not exactly. You see, I told him. Your friend Josh is not used to being owner of a slave, but he's learning. Chuck's around here, folks won't know the difference. Hey, since you're me living here a spell, come on down and meet my mom and pa. We'll get to be good friends. We thought we might see you driving up in a, a coach and four. It's nice to see being wealthy hasn't changed you. <laughs> well, you know how it is with us millionaires. We've got to remember when we were poor. It shouldn't be too hard. It's only been about a week. <laughs> Ma, he's here with Jonah. Josh is slave. Israel, that's no way to introduce a person. Hello, Jonah. It's my pleasure, ma'am. Welcome to Boonesboro, Jonah. You're very kind, sir. Dan, Josh and his friend must be tired and hungry. I think the least we can do is offer them a meal. Becky, I thank you, but I'm not too hungry, and I got to get on over to the fort. How about you, Jonah? Ma'am, I'd appreciate a good meal. Mr. Josh's cooking is not very good. <laughs> then come along. Did I hear him say that you've been doing all the cooking? Yeah. 
B but he does his own dishes. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but I've always understood that one of the arguments for owning slaves in the first place was that they take care of you. Did you ever own one? No, I don't believe that. Well, it's not as simple as you think. He's a very high-type slave, and household chores ain't one of his duties. Well, what does he do? Hangs up my clothes and shines my boots. But I gotta get on over to the store. I gotta pick up some supplies. Uh, that's another thing about slaves. You gotta house them and feed them. I guess that's it. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Get that together, put it on my bill, and I'll send my boy over for it a little bit later. Uh, your boy? Oh, you don't know about Jonah, do you? No. Jonah? Who's Jonah? That's a slave I brought back with me. We you need a slave for? It? Well, take care of my interest when I'm not around, I guess. Just exactly what interest do you have outside of that old shack you live in? Yeah. <laughs> You are now looking at one of the landed gentry. There is a deed to a full section of Kentucky land right down there on that river. What? A full section? Yeah. Well, do you aim to take up farming, Josh? No. I figure I'll go ahead and trap like I always do and uh, leave the farming to my help. <laughs> Would you pour my friends a drink and get yourself one, too? Cincinnati. Well, I suppose we'll just put that on your bill, huh? Now, you uh, wouldn't want to lose my trade because you refused to extend me a little credit, would you? Well, no, I wouldn't want to lose it, but then again, I ain't too sure I can afford to keep it. Well, now, what can I do for you? You can set us up a jug of your finest rum. Oh, you want to drink it here? I'll take it with you. Well, sample it now. All right, sir. You a uh, stranger in these parts? Just passing through. Me and my partner spent the winter trapping on the Yazoo down in Tennessee. We heard there was a rendezvous up here this spring. Me and Bear are looking forward to it. Six months in those hills makes a man crave some action. <laughs> Bear? Bear Barnett, my partner. Maybe heard of him. I can't say that I have. Well, that's, that's kind of surprising with his reputation. A uh, reputation for what? For fighting. Ain't a man in this territory can stand up to him. Seems to me like a statement like that might be open to question. Well, now. I always like to meet a sporting man. That's a thousand dollars. Gold. It says Bear can whip any man in Kentucky. Just in case you want to make a little wager. Well, now, the way you've been talking about him and seeing the size of him, it don't seem like it ought to be an even bet. Well, I'll show you I'm a gambling man. Give odds. Say, three to one. You say five to one, you got yourself a bet. For how much? All of it. My 200 against that 1,000. Mister, you got a deal. Now, if I could just see the color of your money. Well, I ain't got that kind of money on me, but if you let me know where you are, I'll get it to you by night. Well, we're camping on the river, just outside of town. It's a pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Clements. Clements. Josh Clements. Yeah. Well, see you tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, when's this fight going to take place? Uh, how about the first day of the rendezvous? Now, that way everybody can get in on the fun. Like I said, it's a pleasure. Josh, uh, Mr. Clements, let me ask you a question. Now, if uh, you got enough cash to take this man's bet, then how about the money you owe me? I can explain that. I didn't really make that bet for me. Well, who are you betting for? The four of you. Look, I'm your good friend. I couldn't stand to see you miss out on all that easy money. You mean you want us to put up our money? At five to one odds, you can't afford not to. Well, it seems to me he's pretty quick in picking up them odds. It looked to me like he was leading you into that betting. It looked like he was leading, but I was the one doing the leading. Well, who's going to do the fighting? Jonah? Yeah, but, uh, but can he fight? Can he fight? You take my word for it. That's the roughest man. He cleaned out a bar one night quicker than you could by hollering fire. Now, that don't prove nothing. Besides that. 
My uncle used to match him, took him all the way to England to fight for prize. Look, it's only $50 a piece. Well, I reckon I can afford that. I still got some trapping money left. Let me ask you, uh, just how do you cut in on this, Josh? I was coming to that. $50 a piece. 40 for you, 10 for me. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait Come a minute. On. Now, that's my deal. Now, you can take it or leave it. Look, I'm entitled to something. After all, I own the fighter. Well, now, sounds fair enough to me. You know, as long as you guarantee that he'll win. I'll show you how much faith I got in. Look, that's the deed to the property. I'll sign it over to you. If Jonah loses, then at least you got a piece of land. Fair enough. Yep. I don't know, Homer. Two hundred dollars seems like pretty small pickings. It's nowhere near as much as we figured we could take these farmers for. Well, there'll be plenty more. When the trappers start coming in and taking on the liquor, There'll be plenty of challenges and at better odds. Just don't make it look too easy. Take a few falls. They'll all think they can whip you. Here's to all honest men. May they stay corruptible, gullible, and greedy. Hello there. Well, come on in. Well, Mr. Clemens, I just about give up on you. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. Say hello to my friend Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone? Say, I heard a lot about you. I'm mighty proud to know you. Uh, this is my friend, Bear Barnett. Bear, would you like to join us in a drink? Oh, I think we better not. Uh, I just came over here to bring you the money. Didn't want you to think I backed out on it. You can count it if you want to. Oh, no need for that. I never give a thought to you not showing up. Well, I guess this seals the deal. Well, uh, almost. Uh, it's not that I don't trust you, but I figured we both might sleep better if we had somebody to hold the bet. So I figured Daniel here. Why, sure. I'll just go get my money. You the one I'm fighting? No, not me. I only fight when I'm mad, and right now I'm feeling mighty friendly. Well, I'm just as glad, considering the size of you. You are, Mr. Boone. I'm mighty glad to have you keep that safe for me. Well. I guess that just about does it. We'll be seeing you. Sorry, can't stay and have a drink with us. But then me and Bear will buy you one before we leave town. It's been a pleasure. Homer? You think it was smart handing over all that money? To Boone? He runs his territory. Letting him hold stakes just goes to prove we're honest. Josh, I don't know what you're getting into, but I'll tell you one thing. Those two are not trappers. I figured that. And that big one, he spent a lot of time in the fighting ring. Figured that, too. So was Jonah. Well, speaking of Jonah, how does he feel about this fight? He don't know about it yet. Well, when are you going to tell him? Tonight. He's tavern waiting on me now. Josh, I don't want to pry, but do you mind telling me why you got mixed up in something like this? Daniel, you're the only one I'd tell this, but an uncle of mine didn't leave me money like I expected. And well, he gave it all away before he died. Only thing I wound up with was that land in Jonah. And I had to figure out some way to pay Cincinnati what I owe him and keep on eating for a little while. Well, Cincinnati would have cared you if you knew what the story was. I know it. I just don't want to be indebted. Besides, I figure I'll be all clear within a week. Well, for your sake, Josh, I hope you're right. But if you're wrong... You could wind up in an awful lot of trouble. Wrong? What could go wrong? The way I got it figured, I'm gonna be kind of ashamed to take the money. I'm sorry you didn't ask me, Mr. Josh, because then I could have told you I won't fight him. I didn't have time. I had to get that bet cut. What did you say? I won't fight him. Now, I, I'm just gonna pretend that I didn't hear you right. Well, you can pretend all you want to, because the next time you ask me, the answer is going to be the same. I don't suppose you'd mind telling me why. Because it doesn't come under the headings of the duties of what I'm supposed to do. Now, well, wait a minute. Now, 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 you told me, as a body slave, you're supposed to look out for my welfare. That's what I said. Well, you don't know how much welfare I got riding on this match. <laughs> 
There's no point in arguing, Mr. Charles. The answer is the same. I won't fight him. Johnny, you can't do this to me! You didn't see fit to consult me. I don't see where I'm to blame. If you're in trouble, it's not my fault. It's yours. Now, if you're through asking me questions, I'll pick up the supplies and go back to the cabin. He walked out of here like he was real upset. I wonder what made him do that. I don't think you want to know. Well, of course I want to know, seeing as how I have a certain sum invested in him. That's the thing I don't think you want to know. He ain't gonna fight. Did I hear you real plain? You ain't never gonna hear me any plainer. I said he ain't gonna fight. Well, now, if you want him like you say you do, then he's got to do what you tell him. Not unless he wants to, he don't. And if he says it's against the rules, that's against the rules. Daniel, you mind the store. I'm going to call myself a business conference. Daniel, Josh, I understand that the climate in Canada is very agreeable this time of the year. We talked it over on the way. And the question we kept asking was, if Joan ain't going to fight, who is? You know, if our man don't show up, we lose all that money. Well, that's, that's a good question. I hope you found an answer. Well, now we did. Knowing how bad you felt, we decided that seeing as how Jonah wasn't going to represent us, it was only fair to give you the first chance to take his place. Me? Yeah, yeah we knew you'd be pleased. Now, now, wait a minute. Daniel? Well, I'm just here to make sure that they don't hang you out right. Huh. Well, listen, now, uh, let's talk about this calm and sensible. Now, uh, I mean, it's not like you're losing your money, you know. I mean, you still got the title to my land. Oh, the way we figure, we got that either way. And we don't want to disappoint all those townspeople that are looking forward to this here contest. And since we only got a few days left, we better get you into training right away. What kind of training? Now, as I recall, these here professionals soak their hands in brine, you know, to toughen up their skin, and their faces, too, so as they won't get cut so bad. Oh, and then you gotta get up every morning and run, you know, to strengthen their legs, you know. And just so as you won't forget the rules, I'm gonna let you stay in my storehouse for a few days, rent-free. Now you've gone too far. Grab him, boys, before he gets back. Donald, oh, don't just sit there and do something. Oh, I'm gonna do something, all right. If you don't win, I'm going to hand all this money I'm holding over to the men you introduced me to last night. Let's go. Pert for a fella his age. Don't look like he's even windroke neither. He's been at it for 15 minutes now. You know, I hear some of them French fellers fight with their feet. Now, maybe he ought to do something like that. Yeah. Take him by surprise, so to speak. We ain't got time to teach him, so he's just gonna have to go with what he's got. Plain old hitting and kicking and scratching and gouging, huh? Scratching and gouging? You gotta be out of your mind. Them last two is out. They ain't sportsmanlike. <laughs> Sorry about that, Josh. Me and my big mouth. <laughs> I put pork down for the winter in brine that had less salt and mat in it. I believe it. Go on. Hmm. If that don't toughen him up, nothing will. All right, we're all set. Bring him on over, boys. All set for what? Yes, get on over there. Come on, Josh. Come on, let's go. Oh, no. No, you don't. Now, You're not going to put me in there like a slab of pork. Now it's for your own good. Stop you from bleeding all over the place. I ain't going to do it. Oh, you're the most uncooperative man I ever did see. I, all right, let's... boys, let's go. Right? Come on. Come on. Down you go. How long do you reckon we should keep him under there? Oh, long enough for that there Brian to start pickling him, but not long enough to drown him. Oh, is it heading for the 
water again. Get him out of there before it found her. Come on, Josh. Get out. Come on, Connie, get him. Get him out of there. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. there's no doubt about it. He's round into shape, all right. Three, four days ago, I'd have got him out of here all by myself. Get his leg. Oh, my. You. Dan, just how much trouble is Josh in? Oh, about all the trouble a man can get in, considering the time he had to work on it. Such as? Well, first of all, he's in debt to Cincinnati. Then he talks Cincinnati and the others into putting up money on a bet he can't make good on. And tomorrow, he's got to fight a man who makes his living as a fighter. And finally, he signed over his land as a forfeit in case he loses. Well, what will happen to him if he fights this Bear Barnett? Oh, I reckon he's bound to survive, but it's bound to be a mighty unpleasant afternoon. Maybe you could talk to him. Talk to who? To Jonah. Well, you could find out why he's acting the way he is and, and why he won't fight this man for Josh. Well, I couldn't do that, Becky. I hardly know him. And besides, I can't say that I really disagree with him. Josh did take an awful lot for granted. Maybe so. But I still think somebody should talk to him. If you'd like to go fishing with me. No, I... I haven't been fishing in a long time. I expect I've almost forgotten how to by now. I can teach you. You see, my mom doesn't like me to go too near the river by myself. Josh used to take me, but he's been too busy lately. Has he? I hadn't heard. Hadn't heard? No. The Josh doesn't come home lately. And I don't get much company here. I guess folks don't think about associating with a slave. Maybe because it's what you did to Josh. What I did to him? Well, sure. You wouldn't fight when he was dependent on you. Why won't you fight, Jonah? Are you as scared of Bear Barnett? No, I am not as scared of Bear Barnett. Then why? Well, you see, it's hard to explain. Mr. Josh's uncle left me in his responsibility to take care of him, to show him how to till the land, plant the crop. And if I'd have gone on and accepted that fight so he'd win the money, he would have gone on being shiftless and fiddle-footed. All the man thinks about is making easy money. If that's true, why is he going to fight Bear Barnett in himself? What? The boss says he mightn't have threw it. The man can be too pleasant. Well, why does he want to do that? Because he spent all his money getting that will settled. So he didn't have anything left to pay Cincinnati what he owed him. Well, he didn't tell me that. That ain't all of it. When he was making that match with Bear, there's some other people betting on you, too. Because Josh told him to. So he signed over his land. So no one would lose anything on account of him. Well, he can't do that. His claim to the land is like his claim on me. He can't transfer a title to it. Well, then. Bear Barnett don't kill him. Cincinnati and the others will. See you later, Jonah. Oh, yeah. Could be. Oh, I reckon he's around here someplace. Becky, why don't you wait right here? I'm going to go over and talk with Josh. Dan, isn't there some way you can help Josh? Well, I reckon the only way I could help him would be to volunteer to take his place. And I don't reckon he'd stand for it, and I don't think I'll insult him by suggestion. I'll be right back. Well, Josh, how do you feel? Like a Christian just before somebody fed him to a lion. 
Well, you can always play it smart. Let him hit you once, but then just stay down. You know I can't do that. I've had a lot of time to think since I've been locked up in there. Anything I get, I brought on myself. Only way I'd whip that bear is if he had a heart attack. But there ain't nobody going to say I didn't try. Well, I didn't figure you'd be sensible about it, and I don't reckon I would be either if I were in your place. Well, good luck. Dan, what time's this thing start? I'm getting tired of getting ready for this massacre. Well, it doesn't look like you're gonna have long to wait. I wish I could do something for you. There is. You can tell that fiddle player to stop playing for a dance and see if he knows anything for a funeral. Shall we join the crowd? I don't think I want to see it. And I don't think I want Israel to see it either. Oh, Ma! Uh, Israel, I think your mother's right. I'm not looking forward to this myself. Go get him, Josh. Just don't let him lay his hands on you. If you can't outfight him, you can always outrun him. Come on, come on. Get under those ropes. Sit down. Get the stool. Sit down. That bear is a mean looking man. In spite of what he done to us, I still feel sorry for Josh. You think, uh, listen, do you think we should put a stop to this? Well, if we tried that, the crowd would kill us. Well, let's get with it. attention now. This here's going to be a fight to the finish. Catch as catch can. However, now, uh, there's going to be no gouging, no, no biting. Now, you understand? Jonah! Get out of here. You're trying to commit suicide. Jonah! Do like I said and get out of here. You can't fight a man like that. What's he doing here? Well, uh, oh, that that's a man I had planned to do the fight, and I just hold his seat for him. Why do you suppose Jonah changed his mind? I don't know, but I'm sure glad he did. I, I don't think I could have stood it just standing here and watching old Josh get killed. All right, ladies and gents, now we'll get on here. Now, like I said, this is going to be a fight to the finish. So, remember, no gouging, no biting. So if you two gents are ready, why, just come right ahead. Let's have at it. But uh, we'll I get out of here. <laughs>
were wonderful. <laughs> Jonah, it was... Jonah? Jonah? Listen, Jonah. Jonah! Let him go, John. Oh, what do you suppose the matter with him? I don't know, but he doesn't want to talk to you. Let me go after him, Pa. Maybe he'll talk to me. All right, son. And bring him home to dinner. I've got a turkey on. Looking so downhearted. Uh, just thinking what a fool I've been. No wonder Jonah won't speak to me. Well, here, try a little of this. If this doesn't cheer you up, you're in a real bad way. Dinner's all ready to put on the table as soon as Israel and Jonah get here. Where's Jonah? He's not coming. Well, he hasn't heard of anything, is he? Nope. He's going away. Going where? He didn't say. He's just leaving. Well, why would he do a thing like that? Because he thinks he's a failure. Because he can't keep his promise to your uncle about helping you with the land. You being as irresponsible as you are. Becky, you, you got to excuse me. I got to get over there before he leaves. Dinner will keep, and I think we should all go along. You, uh... Going to leave before I even had a chance to say thank you, huh? Thank me for what? Quite possibly saving my life. I know that may not be too important to you, but it's kind of valuable to me. <laughs> well, you would have made out all right without me. Oh, sure. I'd have been massacred, and I got a witness along to back me up. Why are you leaving, Joan? Boone, I gave my word on something I couldn't make good in. It was a mistake for me to interfere in Mr. Josh's life. Man has to live with his mistakes, but I never heard where he had to live in the same house with him. It's not your mistake, Jonah. It's Uncle Langston's. He's a good man. He meant well, but he's got no right to dictate to anybody how they're going to live. Me, a planner? If I was going to be a planner, I'd have been a planner a long time ago. Guess I found that out. I'm not finished yet. I'm not the only mistake he made. You're the other one. Served him all your life. He had no right to ask you to serve him after he'd done cashed in his chips. And, and of all things, being a slave to somebody like me. Now, does that make sense or not? It really makes sense. So, as of right now, you're not serving anybody but yourself. Because you're free. I'm setting you free, and I'm going to find a paper that'll make it legal. Mr. Josh. Uh, Furthermore, you now own one section of Kentucky land. You can't transfer that title, Mr. Josh. I can will it to you. Now, don't you think you ought to kind of hang around to see that the weeds don't grow up in it until somebody hangs me or shoots me or something happens? Mr. Josh. Last thing. Don't call me mister anymore. That's all I got to say, Jones. You still planning on leaving, Jonah? He can't leave yet. I haven't had a chance to take him fishing yet. Yes, you, uh, you, you did promise that you'd teach me that, uh, Israel. I don't like to interrupt all this, but I've got supper cooking at home. And if none of you are going to eat it, I'm going to feed it to the hogs. I reckon we better go. 